<laughs> this week, we interviewed Jason Fernandez for part two of our coaches development series to learn exactly how to intern, hire, and onboard new coaches at your box. Check it out. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. I am your host, Marcus Gersey, and I have with me today the one and only Mr. Jason Fernandez. What's up, brother? What's going on, everybody? How are you? Awesome, man. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with who Jason Fernandez is, uh, because you didn't join us last week or because you're not on the internet, uh, Jason Fernandez is a uh, celebrated box owner, as far as I'm concerned, a CrossFit Rife. And um, also works with the seminar staff, has a killer channel on YouTube teaching everything about, I mean, whether you're talking training, you're talking about how to run a great gym, uh, jerk block talk, stellar program. And uh, today we are going to be diving further into coaches development. It's one of the things we probably get asked about most uh, once we begin working with clients on, you know, sales and marketing, you know, because at the end of the day, the coaches are our product. So we want to make sure we are, you know, developing great uh, coaches and, and providing a great experience for our clients. And Jason has done a phenomenal job, not just uh, building this at his gym, uh, but also doing this worldwide, working with, uh, you know, gym owners and coaches all over the world. That's kind of what he does. So um, we're going to dive today into the actual internship and hiring and onboarding process. Uh, Jason, thanks for joining us, man. Absolutely, man. I, I love, I love doing this stuff. So I'm, uh, there's nothing I'd rather be doing right now. Perfect. Uh, so, guys, so here's some things. Uh, uh, or, Jason, why should a, a gym owner care about this? This this is one of the key metrics on like how you're going to grow your gym. So, obviously, regardless of where your gym begins and where you finish, whether you sell it or not, there's some systematic things that you're going to have to happen within growth, and one of them is developing a staff. So. If you're not really sure on how to bring people into the fold and then you're not really sure on how to train them and get them up to speed so that you can, you know, start working, you know, if you haven't read E-Myth, like start working on your business rather than in your business, this, these are the things you need to have in place so that as you, so that you can actually facilitate growth and not just hoping that it happens organically. Um, that's to some extent, that's a thing, but that goes away really quickly if you're not prepared to start bringing on staff to help you. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, as the gym grows, it just get more money, but that just really means like you might make some more revenue, but you just have a lot more stuff to deal with. So you're going to need to grow your team and bring people on to help with that kind of stuff. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, oftentimes with, with gym owners, I think that they, they kind of are reactive to the whole, like finding, finding help or finding, you know, uh, the members of their team. Um, like, you know, well, I don't, you know, how do, where do I go to find someone and how do I recruit and, or do I, you know, go externally or do I find someone from the inside? Um, so mm -hmm. these are all things I want to get into today, um, so that we can really kind of dis uh, I don't know what to dispel, um, debunk some of the, the theories and approaches that people take that really get into yeah. a lot of trouble when, uh, if you're intentional about, you know, who you're bringing on and how you're bringing them on and how you're setting intentions and making certain, you know, quality standards and so on part of this practice coming on and into your ecosystem and ultimately finding, learning how to find a great team member over everything. Um, I think we're going to be able to provide a lot of value. So, uh, let's jump right into this thing. So, okay. um, we're going to cover kind of three phases, right? So we'll start with the internship phase. Then we'll talk about actually hiring someone and then actually onboarding that new hire. So where do we start with internships? So the first thing, which uh, probably I think most people probably just forego this process and this initial conversation is what sets the tone for everything else. Um, so the, the general scenario is I'm a gym owner. I want to bring somebody on. You know, Jimmy is like, Hey, I'm really into this stuff. I want to get into it. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to coach here. And you're like, cool, let's get started. Um, right there, that's a breakdown. And that's something that if you're the gym owner, you're the head honcho and you're the, and you're the person responsible for building the team and the culture, mm -hmm. you need to change that approach. Um, so if you start from the get go from a professional standpoint, you can 
not eliminate, but you can mitigate a lot of the problems that you're going to have down the road. So some of the problems you're going to have down the road is like people just don't take it seriously. That's the first one. They're like, oh, I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought I was just going to be an intern and then get hired. So you, if you start this off the right way, people get the idea that this is a serious, uh, a serious endeavor. And then if you start this off on a professional note, this is really your opportunity to set the tone for, hey, you were a, a customer or we were friends now to this is a employee employer relationship, at least this portion of it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> starting that off and what I think should happen, and I've seen a lot of success with this is they need to write you in some sort of formal um, email request that they want to, that they would like to intern on your staff. Just literally be like, Hey, I want you to shoot me an email that says that you want to do this. And this just starts the whole documentation process. You should have a response to them. That's it. And I've in the notes in the show notes, guys, you'll have just my template that I use. And a lot of this I've stolen from other places. Um, but it's a, a written out email delineating what's expected, what the process is going to be. And that's going to help you set the tone for what's going forward. Um, I've literally had probably no less than a half a dozen people that I've, they've contacted me about coaching or interning. I fired this email back out to them. Uh, and when I fired out, I CC the whole team. So everybody on my coaching staff and staff knows that there's a, potentially an intern coming on. Um, and then I've had people literally based on receiving the, the email forego the intern process. They're like, no, no, this is uh, this way more intense than I thought it was. Right. And so that's your, that's your first filter is just setting the tone there. Uh, and then once they respond back with like, okay, cool, uh, I'm in, then you kind of go through and you start getting them kind of ramped up for the intern process. Uh, and then what we'll do at our gym is we'll start getting them scheduled out for classes that we want them to shadow. And then we start that process. And, and ours is, is scheduled for three months. But we've had people take four months. We've had people take six months. We've had a lot of in between. And it's really kind of up to that coach on like how quickly they get through the internship. And uh, ours is, has some structure to it, but there's a lot of leeway on the staff's part, on my part. And in if you guys take a look at that email in there, it very clearly states that in a lot of gyms, if somebody just does the internship, they get hired. I think that's a mistake. Uh, I, I, I don't think everybody should make it through your intern process. I, I think if they do, uh, quite frankly, it's probably a shitty filter. So you or should have some existent people. filter. Yeah. Or, or a non -exist existent filter. You should have, you know, I don't know. I'm just making up numbers here, but like maybe 50% of people should not make it all the way through there. And in there it should say like, okay, you might make it through the, the intern process, but that doesn't mean I'm going to hire you. Right. This is, it's, it's a job interview. And I think if you clearly state from, from day one, this is a job interview. And in our email, it says like, when you reply back to this email, your evaluation process starts. And that's when we start evaluating them for like, are they a good team member? Are they a good team member? Are they a good fit? Should we continue this? Um, and then from there, we'll start that process. And that's basically broken into three blocks. Um, ours is 90 days. Uh, but you can make this you can make this as long or as short as you want. So I don't think there's a right or wrong timeline. I just think there's are you getting the product that you want at the end or not? And then, sure. and you can be the, and the gym owner or the head coach can be the one that kind of makes that determination. We're looking for certain things. Um, and some people are, can do it a little faster, but we'll make them right out in three months. Just there's other things I want to find out, mm -hmm. uh, about the individual. Um, and then we'll move on from there. And then, uh, and we can kind of go through the, the kind of the three different blocks and what I look at when we have somebody come through on the internship. Sure. Yeah. I'd like to dig into that, but before we, before we move into that, do you require even if let's say someone is already a career coach, right? Let's say they're, they're a coach that, you know, is, you know, they've got their hours in and you, it's not necessarily so much about, um, you know, do they know what they're doing as much as you want to see if they're a fit for you? Do you still require that person to go through the same internship process or do you have an expedited process for those? Uh, so I've done it both ways. And, and again, the way I look at it is like this. You, you create the structure and the rules, and then you can choose to break them if you need to. Like mm -hmm. You're the boss. Uh, but I would tell you breaking the rules has 
some potential pitfalls and I've, I've done this, right? So I've, I've been guilty of this. So let's say you have a coaching staff of six people who have all been through your intern process, which should be a grueling thing. It should be uncomfortable. And then you decide to expedite the seventh person. You've created to some degree a lose lose scenario for that person that you expedited, whether they're good or not. Yep. Because they didn't have to go through the process. Now I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's something you have to take into account. Um, so if you, if you choose to do that, you're going to have to put out some fires or some disgruntled coaches on the back end, uh, and, and have those conversations with it. Uh, but for the most part, I think I've only done that once or twice maybe only once. And, uh, there were some people that were a little grumpy about it and rightfully so. Yeah. Um, so we, for the most part, you know, nine times out of 10, like they will go through the full intern process for a lot of reasons. I, I think just personally, if somebody's not willing to do it, then they just don't want to be there. And it's just a good filter. Yeah. We actually had a, cause I ran into that challenge initially where we had the internship, we had hiring, we had onboarding, and then we came across some coaches that were really good, really well known in our area that I knew were available and we wanted to grab them. And I knew that if I gave them, you know, they needed a full time job. This is their career. They've got, they're supporting a, a, a family, a lifestyle and so on. And I knew that it wasn't going to work. So what we ended up doing was we put a requirement. You had to have someone who could verify that you've done like whatever. I think it was like 500 hours of like you've led group classes, you've had basically 500 classes on your own that someone would verify. And then you can bypass my internship because my onboarding program was still so robust because we basically made them go through all of our levels. We had a level system for our athletes. Yeah. The coaches had to go through it just like anyone who just came out of on ramp, proving proficiency, proving understanding and while also going through, you know, verification on, you know, movement standards and, and our, our cue patterns and all that sort of stuff that we had established it to memorize it, take a written test. But so what we did was, is we put that standard in place on the front end and that took the whole like, well, how come she didn't have to go through the internship program I went through? It's like, she's already, she's already got like five years of full-time coaching under her belt. Like she yeah. tested out. <laughs> so, but yeah. she still had to go through the same everything else that you had yeah. to in order to get paid what you get paid to get the hours you get paid. Now she's on the same playing field. Yeah, I, I, that's something that we did not do. And now that you say that, that's, that's a, that's probably something I'll have to develop. I like that a lot. Um, and I, I think there's a, if you're going to do that, I think there's a conversation that should happen to that person who's going to test out because some people I just think are oblivious and it, it might be something where you say, Hey, listen, um, you know, just so you know, everybody else has done this process. Y you potentially could bypass it. You need to recognize that and you need to act accordingly. Because, you know, that's just the, that's just the tribe mentality is if, if I had to, if I had to kind of earn my scars, I kind of want you to earn your scars too, no to doubt. be on the team. Oh yeah. Um, you're you're and if screwing them on the team. Everyone's going to have resentment if they didn't go through it and earn their stripes just like they did. No doubt. Yeah. So if, if that's, if that's the case, you should probably keep that person pretty close and make sure they actually grasp that like how important that is and that they should probably just lay low for a while uh and just not get in anybody's way when well, that stuff when and what that we happens. also yeah what we also did was then moving forward once we instituted that is that when someone would start the internship program we would tell them you could test out if so that they knew oh because i don't have any experience yet i'm going through this more robust kind of ramp up if you yeah. will and you know some people i say most people go through it not everybody does uh, because some people have already been doing this five years. That makes sense, right? They're like, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And so then in the future, when someone else would come in, they're like, oh, okay. They they passed the test because they still went through like a 90-minute one-on-one interview with myself and my partner, two-on-one, where we would drill yeah. them on all sorts of different things um, you know, to even see if someone was a fit. So yeah. you know, between the interview and their verification of their hours, setting the expectation for the new people coming into – the internship program, it kind of nipped it in the butt for the future. So yeah. it wasn't perfect I because think we had some legacy people who started with us when it was all loosey goosey. And, um, you know, but we, and we had to force them to go through all of our programs and they were kicking and screaming, but they ended up doing it anyway. And, uh, it all, it all worked out in the end. 
Yeah, I think it's important because you, you have to step, you have to set the standard somewhere. And if everybody, if you can justify a reason to let everybody on the team, then that really is going to screw with your culture down the road. Then, then there, then everybody didn't have to abide by the same rules. Everybody got there via some other weird path because they were special, yeah. stuff like that. Um, so it can be painful, but it's just, you know, like a lot of those things are painful, but the end result will not be painful. And what I'll tell you is if everybody goes through the intern process and they all have to really, really scratch and claw to make it through that day and they have to, and they have to fucking earn it. Mm-hmm. Now I have a team of people that are also my filter. So now it's not just right. me, mm-hmm. you know, now those people are going to come back to me and they're like, they're like, you know, John doesn't take out the trash. They're like, when I was an intern, the trash was empty all the time, you know? Right. So and, and, and they're just going to give you feedback on that. So, um, and that brings up a, a point that I wanted to make later, but I was bringing it out. So you as a head coach or me or whoever is ultimately the, the deciding uh, authority on signing paychecks, you have the ultimate decision on hiring people. But I would tell you on my staff, everybody gets a vote. You know, when we finally get to the point where we're going to go like, all right, he's made it through for the most part, we're going to sit around and I'm going to go, where are we at here? And if this person made it through successfully and I get six thumbs down because of whatever, um, they're not getting hired because they have to be able to play nice with the other kids in the playground. Like that is first and foremost above anything else. And I think a lot of people overlook that. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so big question is paid or unpaid internship? Me unpaid for a lot of reasons because there's, uh, there's, there's no guarantee they're going to stay there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why I would start paying you uh, to do that. Uh, now that's not right or wrong. That's just my opinion on it. Um, I also have them keep their membership intact if they happen to be an athlete at the gym because the scenario the other way where Let's say they come on, they do an internship. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to waive your, your membership and they don't make it through the internship. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, okay, now I'm going to turn your membership back on. Now I have another problem I have to deal with because right. they're like, well, I, I wasn't paying before. I don't want to pay anymore. And it's like, now I have to take somebody who that you're probably going to lose that person. Like that's probably how that's going to unfold. So it, it, it you potentially could be in a scenario where like you're going to lose a good asset to your community who just wasn't a good asset to your coaching staff. Right. Um, so, uh, I, we do ours. It's not paid. Um, it's not, they have to continue their membership. And then after that, we don't do memberships anymore for our coaching staff and then they will go into payroll. So that's just my thoughts on it. Um, you know, and, um, are you, no, nah, I lost my train of thought. Never mind. Um, welcome back. Um, so, okay. So we have, okay. Here's the question. Do you proactively seek out people to get into your intern program, internship program, or do you, are you just reactive if people come to you and say, Hey, I'm interested. I am always kind of have my ears, you know, they're always kind of perked up and the, and the staff is, I'm, I, I like to think of it this way. I'm never like actively, looking for a coach, but I'm never not looking for a coach. So we'll kind of eye people and, and I know most gyms like have a couple people floating around that are just gen generally interested in coaching. So we'll have some conversations. If I have somebody that is is pretty interested, um, we'll talk about getting them into a level one. Uh, if, if I'm able to do that for them via, you know, get them into one seminar locally here through other gyms or myself will do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of that, uh, I, you know, for the most part, I think like if you're not willing to invest in your own education, then I probably don't want you on the staff. Um, so I, I think it's, uh, I think it's different for everybody. Like I know gyms that are in different situations where like they need coaches now, but usually it's too late. It, and, and kind of projecting out six to 12 months to be like, okay, do I have potential gaps here coming up? If so, I need to start kind of canvassing and, and at least putting feelers out to see who's interested yep. and then go from there. Yep. Yeah. Especially if you're growing, then it's something I think you should always be actively 
you know, seeking out and keeping your and starting conversations wherever you see potential and so on. Um, if you can real quick, just kind of bullet off, what are the requirements you have for someone who's applying for an internship program? The, the requirements are pretty loose as far as like, I want them to have a level one by the time they go through the internship. Um, and then if they happen to make it through, like it, immediately we're pushing to level two um, from there. But uh, level one and then, but honestly, like the level one is not really my metric. Like they just have to mesh well with the team. Like the level one is just like, you, yeah, you have to have that in order to do this. Like that's just cost of entry. Um, but from there, it's kind of like, do I like you? Do you have a pretty good presence within the gym? Are you well respected? Like, are you a turd? Are you the guy that shaves reps all the time? Like, those are the things that I'll weed out right from the get go and figure out if, like, if this is even a possibility for you to start the internship from there. Um, but because I don't, and again, this depends on like how mature your gym is and what you're looking for. To me, I don't think you have to have a long list of credentials to start your career. Right. And having this super high barrier for entry, um, you could you could weed out a lot of really good potential, which is not necessarily the right thing in my mind. Yeah, I, I always felt that it was, you know, given this is such a relationship centric business, you know, the personality always trumped the skill set as long as that person was, you know, with it enough and, and willing to grow and learn and invest in themselves and, and do their homework because I can make someone really good. But I can't yeah. make someone really nice and really friendly. Yeah. You know? And no, yeah. People Those are constantly like, what's, you know, what's the criteria? And I'm like, that you're cool, that you get along well with people, that you legitimately like people. That was for me, the number one criteria was, because uh, what I would do is I'd say, you know what, why don't you come in? I'll, I'll give you a, a pass for a week, um, train at the gym, you know, see, see if you like it, get a feel for the staff, make it as if, you know, they're screening us, but I'm watching yeah. them. And I would watch how they would interact in the classes with members, how they would, how they would with the coaches and see ultimately, do they seem like someone who legitimately likes people? Because if they don't, I don't care how many degrees, certifications or years of experience you have, because this is not what my gym is about. And I don't mean that technical understanding and knowledge and experience isn't important, but we can give you a lot of that. And if we, if we guide you through our coaches development program, once you're hired and ongoing education and so on, like we can make you pretty dangerous in a couple of years. And oh, if easily. you've got a willing to learn, if you've got an attitude, you're willing to learn and you are, and you like people, because if you show up and you can stay on time and you can, you can make sure that the gym is running the way that my gym runs in a way that's familiar to my members and make everyone feel like you give a crap about them, then you're already further along than a lot of people. The next part is now, and you've obviously with the basic understanding of the fundamentals, we'll build on yeah. the rest of the stuff and you'll start yeah. as a level one coach. But we, mm -hmm. that's why we also had different mm -hmm. levels of coach at our gym and people knew like, Oh, okay. I'm working with someone who's good, mm -hmm. but they're not a senior coach yet. So yeah. anyway, we'll get into that stuff. So, um, all right. So, internship program. And by the way, if you're watching this, um, Jason was kind enough to not only be on the show and break this all down for us, but we are going to put into the show notes. Um, you'll see it at the top, um, uh, as well as in the comments, uh, a link to a Google doc where he has literally given us the, the internship program. Uh, what else did you have on there? You had the, the email that you uh, sent for pre internship Yeah, the email. I had the internship. I had the kind of the breakdown for the expectation for running classes. Like that's our SOP for like that's start right. to finish what needs to happen for when you run classes. There was a draft for um, the head coach evaluation form and feedback. Uh, and then our little, our little piece there at the end for like continue education, uh, and personal development stuff at the end. By the, by the way, there was a thing I saw in there, um, where you said something like, uh, our motto is just give a fuck. Just one fuck. Just one. Just one <laughs> fuck. That was awesome. That's all it takes, man. It's, uh, it's, well, it's a running joke, but it, it's, well, like, it's serious. Like, that's actually, like, one of our, like, core values is, like, give a fuck just one because it's amazing how many people don't. And, and that, yeah. but that, but that motto, like, goes into a lot of other things, right? So I talk to people all the time. I'm like, okay, if you really care, then why didn't you put all the equipment away? Or why did you walk by that piece of trash? 
or like, why didn't you go talk to Sally when you thought she was having a bad day? Like you, you actually have to care. Like saying that you care is different than putting in the effort and the effort is, and you know, the devil is in the details. And I can, I can tell somebody who cares when they stick around for 20 minutes and they make sure that their class is cleaned up and that everybody's taken care of and the lights are out versus when I come in for a 6 a.m. after a coach had the 6 p.m. and it looks like fucking goat rope in the gym <laughs> you don't care you yeah. know like you don't care so it's it's that's that is a legit motto and core value of our staff so I love it um, all right cool so uh, anything else you want to address about the internship process um, you said the three phases right yeah okay, so let's get into that phases. Yeah, so the three phases, it's broken into 30 day blocks. There's, now there's our minimum requirement for how we do ours. There's a third, there's a minimum requirement of hours worked in those 30 days. So if they don't do that, they, that, that time, that block of time gets pushed to the right. Um, the important thing about the internship process is that it can end at any time, right? So they get, once they finish that block, whether it's 30 or 45 days, they get, um, they get an evaluation and they basically get uh, an up check or a down check. So at the end, it's basically you have to pass three times. So in order to go to phase two, you have to pass phase one. So now, so let's go to phase one. So phase one is basically where we just find out like, are they timely? Do they follow directions? And what is their general interaction with people in the gym? So in that 30 days, they do zero coaching. Like they are told point blank, like, do not open your mouth with regard to coaching. Um, I had a, uh, <laughs> I worked with a chief. For those of you who know, I was in the Navy and I had a chief that I loved. He was just amazing. He was a prior Marine. He was a tanker. And uh, I would just sit in when we would bring in new uh, sailors into our division. Mm -hmm. And he would put them uh, what he would call the 90-day rule, which is you look, you listen, and you shut the fuck up <laughs> because nobody cares what you have to say. So that was kind of the, the, what, what we do with our, with our interns the first 90 days is like, I'm not really interested in your opinions. I'm not really interested in your ideas. What I want to find out is, do you interact? Can you assimilate? Can you follow directions? And how do you interact with the team? Like you can get, you don't have enough context to give me your input on like how the team operates. Like you come in on day one and you're like, Hey, I think you should do this. Like you're probably going to get chopped immediately just for lack of awareness on like where you are in the totem pole. Right. Um, so that's what they do in, in that third, in that 30 days. Now what we do want to see is them interacting with the members and kind of co like helping people off to the side, you know, like logistical stuff, setting up barbells, making sure people have what they need during the classes, helping clean up afterwards. And just generally being like, you know, the teacher's helper, if you want to look at it that way, if you guys have kids, uh, I just want to see, like, I just want to, I, that's where we find out, do they have the intangibles? Are they there early? Do they stay late? Um, are they timely? Do they communicate well if they have to change their schedule or anything like that? Um, all that stuff gets ironed out in the first 30 days. And then um, they will generally not be with me for the first 30 days. They'll be generally be with, like, one of my senior coaches who will then, at the end of that 30 days, come to me and be like, yeah, go ahead and push them to the next phase. Yeah. So once they go to the next phase, that's when we start kind of getting into that six criteria of a coach. But really what we're looking for in those two and that second phase is a little bit going back to what we talked about in the first episode is group management and presence and attitude. Um, they're going to do, uh, we'll have them dabble in giving workout briefs a little bit. They will run the general warm up. And what we're looking for is like, can they maintain a timeline? <clears throat> and then do they have the ability to manage a group? Like do, do they, or do they have a commanding presence? Do people listen to them when they talk? Uh, are they overcompensating for certain things and it's, and it's rubbing people the wrong way? Um, they won't teach any technical movements in that second phase. Um, but we will test them on the technical movement or on the, on the uh, technical portions of that as far as like, you know, progressions, the, the progressions that we use in our gym for, you know, barbell or gymnastics movements, mm -hmm. kind of getting them prepped. Um, and then from there, uh, we will do their evaluations as we go through, and then they'll get another thumbs up or thumbs down. Then the third block is broken into two parts. And the first part, they're going to do, you know, kind of like under instruction, where they will 
they'll run, they'll do workout brief. They'll run the gym warm up. This is where we'll have them start dabbling and like teaching the movement. So if it's a snatch day, it'd be like, all right, dude, you're on teach the snatch. I want to see that like actually people get better and that you're seeing what's, what's happening in the class. <clears throat> but our head coach is still in charge for those like two to three weeks or so. Once they've gotten an up, once they've gotten an up check on that, then the second half of that third block is we're going to let them run the class. At this point, they've probably established some sort of rapport within the community because they've been doing this for 75 days at the bare minimum. So it's, it's usually won't be, uh, there won't be any like members who are like, what the fuck? Like, who's this guy? Um, but at that point we will be hands off. And the way I look at it is like, we will only intervene in the event that they say something technically incorrect or it's a safety issue. Everything else will be treated very much like a coach evaluation where we'll pull them to the side and say, Hey, you know, you need to clean up this, this, and this. Otherwise this is going to be, you're going to get uh, a thumbs down moving forward. So um, we kind of slowly ramp them up and we give them the opportunity to really just kind of do a lot of a monkey see monkey do, because I don't want them to deviate from our, from our standard or our best practices. I want to see if they can actually take those and apply them. Um, and then once we're comfortable with them, then, uh, then we'll start having the conversations about like, Hey, okay, loosen up a little bit, you know, be you tell some jokes, do all that stuff. Uh, but not before that we can check all the boxes and say, okay, you showed up on time. You can open the gym. Like you can run, you can execute the entire lesson plan for a pretty complicated class, uh, and do all that stuff. <clears throat> then from there, we'll move into conversations about potentially being hired, what pay looks like, uh, getting on the schedule, uh, and minimum working hours, stuff like that. Question <laughs> for you real quick on, um, before we kind of move into the next phase yep. here. Um, do you announce them to your, or introduce them to your members while they're in the internship phase, or do you just do it like in the class setting? Right. So it's not like you post it to the blog or you're like, Hey, we've got a new intern starting with us. Just if they're there and they meet him, Hey, you met him. This is Marcus. He's the, he's the new intern. Say hello. Yeah. We will, we'll announce them to the class so that like if they start coaching somebody randomly, the person's like, you're not the fuck coach. Like, why are you talking to me? But we will not, um, we won't announce them like via any official channels mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. Like if they don't get hired, I don't want, I don't want that to be like this weird where like, we're like, what happened to Susan? And be like, Oh, she got chopped from the intern, you know? So I don't, I don't want to kind of put them on blast unofficially. Um, now when they come on, we will, we will make that announcement, but not until then we'll just make sure that everybody in the class knows they're there and what their purpose is and, and, and who they are. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right. Next phase roll. So from there we'll talk about hiring. So they make it all the way through phase one, two, and three. <clears throat> Um, then, uh, that's when the, I'll sit down with all of the coaching staff and all of the coaching staff is going to give me a yes or no. And I usually go by, like, I need to get like somewhere above 75% for that, for that to be a go. So if I really like that person and 75% of the staff doesn't like, they just don't get hired because the staff is going to work with them probably a lot, a lot closer than I will. Um, I mean, we all work pretty closely together, but they're the ones that are going to be in the trenches, you know, having to work together, sort out problems on a daily basis. So um, if the staff doesn't like it, it's just a no-go. Um, and then we'll get into kind of the hiring, onboarding. We'll talk to them about, okay, here's how you're going to get on the schedule. Here's the minimum number of hours required to stay uh, on the staff. Here's what your pay table will look like moving forward. And then from there, they'll probably, they'll move under my wing a little bit more and I'll start training them up on, on all the internal procedures about how we're going to do onboarding of new clients, um, how to do what the sales process looks like if people are walking in the door. So we have like systematic checklists for like, okay, somebody comes in and they're inquiring about CrossFit Rife or they call on the phone, like, this is what you're going to do. This is the checklist. You're going to go through all that. <clears throat> um, and then getting them up on board on like all the staff meetings that we're going to have, what the cleaning procedures are going to be. Um, I've toured around with doing a test and we haven't fully implemented it, but I was, um, I've toured around with a lot of different ideas based on, so in the Navy, like we'd have to qualify, we'd have to qualify for with like for whatever warfare pen that, or whatever community we're in. And I, I was in three different communities, so I had to take multiple warfare uh, qualification tests. And I was considering doing something like that. And I'll probably institute it to some degree, but it's not finalized yet. I'm not really sure exactly what I want that to look like yet. 
Um, so this is all part of the, just the hiring. I don't want to jump into the onboarding stuff too much yet. Got it. What's your criteria now that someone, let's say I finished the internship program. I passed all three Got phases, it. 75% plus, Hey, Marcus doesn't suck. We'd like to have him on the team. What yep. happens next? Walk me through that process. So then I'll sit down with them. Uh, we will, we will go through the full internship process together and I'll be like, all right, like, and I'll have done a lot of this like in little snippets as they go along, mm -hmm. but then I'll break down. Okay. Based on the, all of this, these data points that we have, like these are the things that we need to work on to get you up to speed really, really quickly. So these are what I want your focus points to be moving forward. Um, we'll go through, all right, you know, now this is the, this is the process for submitting your availability for the month, right? Like in order to put you on the staff or to put you on the schedule, these are the minimum requirements, uh, and this is what your pay will look like moving forward. So then we have to go through, make sure they're in payroll, um, get all of their information for that kind of stuff, uh, and then from there, we'll just start rolling. <clears throat> so for compensation, and, and I don't want to dig too deep into this in particular because I think this could be almost a whole episode on its own. Yeah. But how do you – how do I say this to keep it simple? Um what all do you include in their compensation? So for example, most gyms, I mean, 90 plus percent probably yep. just say, Hey, we pay, you know, 15 or 20 or whatever dollars per class. Um, and you know, that means you've got, you know, when you do a class that includes, you know, these 10 things have to happen for it to be a class. And that's even if someone's doing a good job, but do you include outside duties and, and things like, you know, taking out the trash or, you know, whatever else may be like spending time with people. Do you, how do you structure the compensation piece for someone who's new? It's different for when someone kind of gets to like a salaried position, again, whole nother conversation. But when someone's new, I'm assuming they're not starting full-time salary and Correct. just all the way in, right? It's probably going to be yeah. part-time or, you know, something like that. How does that work for you? Yeah. So so ours is based on hours worked, not time in the position, uh, because I've seen that go yep. wrong where you have a few coaches once a month, he's been there for five years and now he's <laughs> making 30 bucks an hour and he still sucks. So <clears throat> ours is based on, um, there's wickets in there and it's like your first, your first potential pay bump. I think is that like, I have to go back and look at it. It's either 200 or 250 hours and then 400 and then 700. And then once you break a thousand, now we're having conversations because a thousand is a lot. And most people have no concept. Like, look, the 700 hours is a fucking lot of hours yeah, on the doubt. floor. Um, and it, that's the minimum required. It's actually 750, I think, to take the level three. And most people are like, I'm going to take the level three. And I'm like, probably not. Like, yeah, that's, it's going to take most people. Uh, it's going to take most people. That's, let's just put it this way. If you're coaching, you know, 70 hours a month, which is a shitload, you're going to, that's going to take you a year. And most people are doing nowhere near that. Most people are in the like 20 to 25 a month. So, um, so that's how ours works just because I don't, and, and I don't think anybody else should do. And, and, in the corporate world, like you don't want to overpay for somebody who's underskilled. So if they've worked 700 hours, there's a certain amount of assumptions I could make about their skill set. Now you could be wrong depending on where they came from, but, uh, and then outside of that, we've broken down all the tasks, the tasks within the gym and then what they're worth for like an hourly basis. So, right. Like, so taking the trash out or cleaning the gym is worth this much per hour. Doing uh, social media is worth this much per hour. Doing admin work is worth this much per hour. Um, we'll pay them for running open gym. We'll pay them for the staff meetings. They get the same benefit for uh, continue education, um, allotment as everybody else. So everything, every task that could be done is broken down by value. And then from there, they just have to log their hours moving forward. And when you do that, like my recommendation is like you have a, like, you know, social media is worth $10 an hour. It's capped at 10 hours a month. Otherwise somebody can just run up. Like, well, I was, I was just, I was doing this a lot this month. I was scrolling <laughs> through a lot. So, yeah, I've, I've we, we did something really similar. So we used to do it by hour as well. And what we actually ended up going to was turning them into projects. So basically this project, so the social media project entails these 10 things. And these are the standards for those 10 things. And this is a project is a month. So if you want to take the social media project, we value that at $450. 
And that means you have to do five posts a week, you know, to here, here, here. You have to do this, this, and that. And they have to look like this yeah. and meet these standards. And we started getting modular with it, which made it really easy then to say, uh, someone be like, oh, I'm too busy. Well, then you lose the project and we can reassign the whole thing to someone else. And it actually made it a little bit easier for us to manage. Um, uh, may have been unique to us. I really haven't heard of a lot of other gyms who do it that way, but we, we got pretty good at kind of breaking the value down and being able to say then once someone's been doing something, for example, like the social media project for six months, I'm like, yeah. ah, she was able to do it in like <clears throat> 10 hours. And you're telling me it takes you like 40 hours. Hers was better yeah, and no. faster. You're doing something <clears throat> wrong. Let's, let's address it. So, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, when you do that, that's something that's probably like outside of the scope of this conversation. But like the, before you start like paying people, you need to determine like what that task is worth. Right, exactly. From, from a standpoint of labor. And that way, when you give it to them, you know, when you hand them their coach's contract, you know, be like, hey, these are the things like as an interim coach or like a, a new coach, like these are the things that you uh, are expected of you. So when you do that, this is how you do it. This is what it's worth. This is what you'll be paid. You know, do you or do you not? Is it a, is 1099? Is it W-2? Uh, do you have a workman's comp? Stuff like that. So when I sit down for hiring, we will give them all of that documentation and lay it out for them line by line. You know, if they have any questions, we'll put them in, in contact with our accountant. Be like, hey, whatever questions you have with regard to tax liability, any of that stuff, just go straight to the accountant. So once, they, once they're on, they have access to all my resources. And I'll be like, all right, I'm not an accountant, but like, set up a, a webinar with, you know, with Mandy and she'll get you squared away. So right. <clears throat> nice. Okay. Now, um, real quick, I think, uh, last question in hiring, um, unless I can okay. think of something else, but, uh, do you bring them on as contractors or as employees? We've done it both ways. We, uh, last year in 2017, we switched from W2 to contractors about halfway through the year, but we had everybody W2 for like three years, I think. Yeah maybe a little less than three years. Um, and that was a lot of reasons. I had some, uh, some conversation at nauseum with my accountant and the consensus was like, Hey, they're, they're not, um, they're not W2 employees. They're, they're contractors. Here's all of the reasons why here's how it's beneficial to you as a business. And here's how it more importantly, here's how it's beneficial to them as contractors from the, from the standpoint of like being able to write off expenses in order to keep more of their money that when they get paid moving forward. And then, you know, on my end, it's like, all right, are you going to reduce your tax liability from, you know, employment tax liability by massive amounts by doing it this way. Yeah. So we, we have them 1099 and I've, I've, I started 1099 and we went W2 and then we went back to 1099 yeah. uh, based on a lot of, a lot of conversations with a lot of lawyers and a lot of accountants. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, we did. Uh, we were contractors only for a long time. And then once we got to the point of creating really like legit full time positions, um, that's where that was the transition. So basically, we would consider someone a part time coach because they also had limited roles, right? So in yeah. the state of California is pretty tough um, on this stuff. So we had to really mind our P's and Q's, uh, make sure we were doing this right. So, um, you know, there are certain things we could ask and couldn't ask them to do. Yep. So once we realized, ah, these are all things we actually want our staff to do. I don't want to do them myself. Um, yeah. we, need, we need to make them an employee. We said, okay, well, let's create a couple of full-time roles, one in management, one in coaching. And now they can take all this stuff on. And if someone wants to become a quote unquote full-time employee, then this is the criteria and your job yeah. actually changes. There's more to it now. And yeah, you know, it was kind of a I carrot definitely with the angle too, because a lot of times coaches want to become a full-time coach. That's a huge milestone to be able to say, Hey, I got to quit my job at Starbucks and, you know, sweeping floors at the college to make an ends meet because I was only getting 10 classes a week. You know, now I've got a full-time gig. So we kind of use that as a, a part of our path, if you will. Yeah, I definitely, there's definitely some spots that should be W2. Like if you have a gym manager who ha who basically has full authority within the gym, that person, from my understanding, and I'm not an accountant or a lawyer, so don't, don't hold me to this, but that person is a W2 employee. Yeah. Um, other people that kind of, kind of come and go as they please, they teach your class, stuff like that. They very much fall in the 1099 yeah. um, category from, from, from people that have advised me. So, um, but I think, I think, like I have full intention of bringing on a gym manager and like, I, like we want to offer, you know, medical and retirement benefits, all that stuff. Yeah. And, and there's ways to do that for both camps too. So, um, 
if you are on the fence about like that, don't make that decision based on this Facebook live or some fucking blog that you read. Like <laughs> right. talk to an attorney, talk to an accountant. They will tell you what to do. Yeah. Seek professional help guys. Don't just guess. Uh, I've seen gyms get turned basically shut down over doing this wrong. And when, if you get audited or they, they come after you, that can suck. So, um, you yeah. know, this is, this is not legal advice. These are just, Hey, uh, go look, go talk to a professional, get, get the actual answers and they'll, they'll be able to guide you. Uh, okay. Uh, so I got the job. I'm hired. I'm a new coach at CrossFit Rife. You walked me through everything. You got, you laid it all out for me. You set expectations. Um, you know what this job is, what it isn't. Um, got me in touch with everybody. So I'm all sorted. Now what? Onboarding time. So, yeah. So I, I, this is important too. So we've not done this in the past and we recently made this change. Um, when we give them their first initial like employee contract, that contract is for one month to be reevaluated in one month. So they go one month and then they're going to go three months. And then from there we will negotiate a 12 month. So I'm going to keep them sweating and I don't do that like to keep them sweating. But like, again, going back to like, this is a process and it's professional just because you get on, like you still need to earn that spot every day. So if they had to earn it, you know, if you started it on a professional basis, they had to earn it through the internship. And even when they get hired, they still had to continue to earn it. That just lets them know that like, Hey, at any point, like if you're not doing your job, you're out. Um, so that's one of the big things that we change is we're like, you're not, you're not here forever. Like you, we're going to talk about this in a month and I'm going to give you feedback. And if you're not doing it, it's either correctable or it's not. Uh, and then from there, the onboarding process is, uh, for the first couple of months is a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with me. So I'm going to watch a lot more of their classes. I'll probably watch three to five a week. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of helping and through that. Feedback. Yep. So I'll just kind of sit off to the side for quite a few of their classes. I might just pull them in and be like, oh, like on a whim and just be like, Hey, you're going to teach this like right now. Um, and they, they're prepared for that. Uh, and then from there, we have a pretty sizable kind of gym manual that we will kind of take them through and walk them through step by step. Um, there's nothing within it. Like if I died tomorrow and you could read the English language, like you could come in and operate our gym. And they're expected to know not all of it. Some of it is kind of outside the scope of their job, but there's, there's nothing in there that they're going to come ask me a question and I'm just going to ask them, did you read the manual? And they're going to be like, uh, and I'll be like, yeah, go read the manual and then don't ask me that question anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We would, we would go through, uh, we did, we had the same thing. We had a manual on all the key standard operating procedures. And then obviously there was like kind of the, the, the key ones. And then there was the more advanced one. So if you actually ran that department yeah. or you ran the front desk, you knew, you know, steps, phases two, three, and four too. And we said, okay, coaches, in order for you to be considered an active coach, which was level one, you had to pass the test <clears throat> on these SOPs. What do you do if someone walks in while you're teaching a class, and there's no one at the front desk. What are the standards for the class opening, closing procedures, um, you know, uh, cleaning the gym, not that they actually had to do it, but they had to understand what perfect was. And yeah. so that they can also call it out if something's not perfect and they show up, um, basic, not sales, but you know, how do you interact with someone who's a potential client at any time? And, mm -hmm. uh, and also just the fundamental cues that we had for our standard movements and they actually had to pass a written test. So we would sit down with them. We would do two, three full day, full days of myself and my partner walking them through our respective, you know, category. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, you ready to take the test? take the test. And then now they were officially, now they're an active coach. Like, and we would actually make the announcement. They, we had a certificate like hierarchy, That's cool. we would take a picture and, and we would make that a big announcement to the community. Like, Hey, welcome coach summer. Yeah. Um, she has gone through our internship program. She has been hired and has gone through. She is now an active coach. Welcome her to the community. We would do a big write up on her. Like you would feature yeah. an athlete, feature them like they're a new rock star. And, you know, yeah. I would personally be there. My partner would personally be there to intro all of her first classes as like, even if I was just hanging out to just be like, Hey, yeah. welcome her and give her a round of applause, celebrate this person, but yeah. you know, make them feel like they're really a part of something and that we give a shit too. Cause at the end of the day, we're a family, right? So we want to yeah. make sure, I mean, we are a business, but again, relationship based, not just yep. with your members, but with your staff. So yeah. making sure they felt important. And then it was basically like, okay, guys, 
or, or okay, Summer, for in this example, you now have a path. Compensation was tied to the milestones that they would be able to hit. So for example, in order for you to even yeah. get your first pay bump, you had to then go through the next phase of our um, like technical training that we had. So you had to now work with my partner, pass some initial tests in regards to queuing and, and so on, but also L2 was required. So yeah. basically you're not even, you, you can't even move into out of the initial phases with and get your pay bump, which was what we basically considered like, that's actually the starting point. Like you're kind of on ramping yeah. for as, as an active coach until you get to this. Cause technically you, and you had 90 days to do it. So from higher, so you had that one month, we had a 90 day ramp up. You had to have your L2 mm -hmm. by the time the 90 days was done and have passed all these tests or basically your employment was ended. Yeah. So our, ours is similar. I forgot to bring that up. We're like you, so our, the, the pay bumps are based on hours worked, but it's in that there's a caveat in there. It says like, you're like, you're eligible for a pay bump. Right. And right. then there's some criteria for that, which is like, okay, you have to have hours. And then as you move up, there's like, you can't get to certain pay bumps without a level two or a level three or a certain amount of, um, like SME courses, uh, or other certifications of, of some sort. So, because for me, like in order to get that, they have to show a trending, a trending professional development, uh, with it, like outside of the gym, which, which we fund. So it's not like they can't say like, I can't afford it. It's like, no, no, I'm going to send you, um, if you don't use it at the end of the year, like I'm going to ask you like, why, like, why, why the fuck are we doing this? Right. Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to add to the onboarding phase? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. I think regardless of where you, like how you do this process, like wh where your gym is, if it's starting, if you're opening a gym in a month or you've been doing this, I think we've been through multiple iterations of this. And the important part is that you just start building your process and it will morph with you over time. The problem is like people are not writing this shit down and they're just like, oh, we're just going to bring them on and, uh, and then they're going to be on staff. And I'm like, well, how did that work? Like, did, like, is everybody else cool with it? Like, did you, did you vet this person appropriately? Like, what was the criteria for you bring this person on? And most times it's just like, I needed a coach. And I'm like, well, that's not a fucking good criteria for, for bringing on a staff member or somebody on your team. So, just start building whatever you think that process should look like. And then if you come to find that like everybody's making it through the process, then you need to revamp it. Like I said, like people should wash out of the program. Otherwise it's not vetting them appropriately. Mm -hmm. No doubt. So, uh, all right. So today we covered how to put together an internship program, um, hiring process criteria. And we talked about onboarding, uh, and again, Jason, you were kind enough to, uh, share these actual templates that, or your actual documents from CrossFit Rife. So people can use that as a starting point. Um, guys, check it out. There's even videos to, um, some jerk block talk, uh, episodes where he breaks down lesson plans, wad briefs, coaching there. This is a very robust set of tools coming with this episode. Uh, so thank you very much, Jason, for uh, sharing that, sharing your knowledge today. Much appreciated. Uh, where can people find more information about you? Um, Jason uh, at CrossFitRife.com. If you guys want to email me, email me at any time. I'm more than happy to talk to you guys about anything. Uh, Jason Fernandez on Facebook. You can find us on CrossFit Rife on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Jerk Block Talk on YouTube, Jfern3 on Instagram, and um, yeah, and if you guys can't find any of that stuff and you're not aware of the internet, you can get in touch with Marcus and he'll put you in touch with me. That's exactly right. So if you've got questions here, uh, make sure you post them to comments. Uh, we're happy to answer them for you. Emily, I saw yours coming in here as we were going, so I think I addressed all that stuff as we went. Um, and, uh, but if you have any questions and you're watching this after the fact, just post them in the comments, tag Jason or myself. We're happy to answer them for you. Uh, that's what this is all about. If you've got some cool docs or info you want to share, post it to comments, the more the merrier. Um, and, uh, so that said, Jason, thanks again so much for joining us, man. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in here, so we'll get them okay. after the fact. Um, have yourself a great weekend guys. We'll see you again next week. Uh, that's it later. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right on, Jason. Bye-bye.